Welcome back. Tom Harbin here with you. And uh, Guy McPherson is, is still with us. I, uh, Guy, I, I asked Danielle to call you back and 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 because uh, I felt like this, that conversation was very incomplete. And this is a really big issue. And, uh, and in fact, the question that I'd like to put out to my callers, uh, to the people watching the show right now, is if you knew that the world was going to end, basically, you know, that, that within 20, 25 years or less, that most of the earth was going to become uninhabitable for human life, what would you do tomorrow? And let me put that question to you, Guy. I think that's a great, I think that's a great question, Tom. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me back on after the uh, little disruption there. Um, what would I do? I would try to ensure the longest possible run for non-human species. I think we're done. I think that as a teacher, I would continue to try to educate people about the dire straits we're in, and I would continue to try to educate people to live as if we're in hospice, to live as if our insignificant lives matter to us and those around us, to treat each other with respect and to go out with some dignity. Instead of grubbing for the last dollar, instead of planning for the future that never comes, let's live here now. Let's now, live in this moment and Morris, be kind to those around us. Morris Berman wrote uh, a couple of really interesting books, but one in particular was very, very dark, um, in which he was basically predicting the end of civilization, not the end of humanity, but the end of civilization. And, and his solution in that book, and we had him on the show talking about this, this was a couple of years ago, um, was that we should basically start monasteries. We should do what the monks did back during the Dark Ages, and write down all the collected knowledge of humanity because it's not going to it's all now moved onto hard drives and those are not going to survive the crash of industrial society uh, might an alternative be if you're actually predicting the end of the human race that you know biology is pretty unstoppable over time and uh, if anything that's one of the big lessons of the previous five extinctions that it's f quite likely that at some point in the future it might be hundreds of thousands of years or even millions of years but at some point in the future a life form as intelligent or more intelligent than us will evolve. Should we be coming up with technologies to leave behind our story and our cautionary tale? Well, I think that's not a bad idea. I think that first we need to try to ensure that as many species as possible make it through the industrial civilization bottleneck. And that's what I'm working for. As Edward O. Wilson, a Harvard biologist, points out, it only requires about 10 million years after an extinction event, after a major extinction event, before we have a, a vibrant, gr verdant planet again. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm working for is, is toward the long haul, towards the 10 million years and beyond out. Right. Will we ever see a, a species like ours arise again? But well, we don't know. Will we ever see Chinook salmon arise again if we cause their extinction? We don't know, but probably not. And so let's try to save the seeds, as it were, for the future, in, including as many species as we can possibly get through the, the industrial civilization bottleneck. Now, one of the things that, um, you know, kind of noodling this out causes me to think that there's a higher probability that we'll survive than, for example, the salmon, is that I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that humans are the only species on Earth that, species on Earth, that it has been able to create habitat under every microclimate, macroclimate that the planet has, from Eskimos to people living on the, on the equator. And that adaptability, which comes out of our, our big brains, uh, it, you know, is an asset beyond just physical adaptability. Might that not, I mean, might it, might it be that, you know, civilization will be gone and humanity as we know it will be gone, but our DNA will, will continue in, I mean, it looks like the last bottleneck, which was probably around 80,000 years ago, um, maybe 160,000 years ago, um, as few as 15, 20,000 humans survived, you know, now that they're doing the DNA studies on this stuff. Um, could we just be seeing another bottleneck and a new iteration, a new incarnation, a new variety of homo is going to emerge? Could be. Um, we don't know with great precision what the future holds, but it would surprise me. And it would surprise me because we're animals. We're human animals. We require habitat, most notably food. 
And if we've already seen phytoplankton in the ocean decline by 50% in the last few decades at 0.85 C warming above baseline. When we get to 3 or 4 C above baseline, it's difficult for me to imagine we'll have a significant number of phytoplankton. That's the base of the marine food web. And so that's, that's half our food. When we get to three or four sea warming, it's difficult for me to imagine we'll have many land plants as well, especially given the rapidity with which we're approaching that three or four sea rise. Um, so without, without land plants, which form the basis for the terrestrial food web, and without phytoplankton in the ocean, I just don't see how we're going to feed ourselves, no matter how clever we are. I agree that we're clever. In fact, I think we chose the wrong name for ourselves. We're not homo sapiens. Sapiens means wise. We're homo... Calidus. Calidus means clever. Mm -hmm. And so I think we're really clever, and we've managed to paint ourselves into an incredible corner. Uh, and, and I just don't see much way out, even though we are incredibly adaptable. In fact, because we are incredible, incredibly adaptable, I don't see a way out with respect to the effectiveness with which we're destroying the living planet that we actually depend upon for our own survival. Yeah. So you're just like dead serious about this. We're, you know, forget 2100. This is going to happen in 20 years or 30 years or less. And it's going to be not just the end of civilization, but possibly, probably the end of humanity and, and most other large animals. Yeah, it's difficult for me. Given what I know about the evidence so far, it's difficult for me to imagine a, a way out of the monkey trap into which we've stuck our hand. Mm -hmm. So, no, I don't see a way out. It's five years ago now that Tim Garrett published that paper. It's seven years ago that he wrote it and submitted it. It says only complete collapse from an economic perspective prevents one runaway greenhouse. All right. Since then, we've triggered those 31 self-reinforcing feedback loops. Remarkable. So I, I don't see a way back. Guy, we're going to have to... I, again, we hit a break here, but we will continue this conversation over the uh, weeks and months to come. Guy McPherson, uh, Nature Bats Last is his blog, GuyMcPherson.com. Thank you. You're listening to Thank the you. Tom Hartman Program.